Good day folks, I'd like to talk to you today about the dipole resonance energy system. It's a concept I came up with after the discussion I had the other day regarding Maxwell's magnetic potentials and magnetic dipoles. Some of the, uh, one, a few of the 20 redacted um, variables in the original Maxwell equations. And taking that into consideration, I showed you guys how a static field can indeed influence, for my example, I used a little compass and that showed us real physical work without actually draining the battery, uh, supporting, you know, the um, magnetic dipole theory. So with that said, I wanted to see how we could use that work and came up with this. So let me explain to you. So obviously when you look at the design from from the first glare you're gonna get at it you're gonna say no way man this is never gonna work but before we proceed you must understand we have to take into consideration Maxwell's 20 original variables and with the Oliver Heaviside revision he omitted all of them except four so this really brings the scale down so it doesn't say that the four existing ones are wrong. It just means that we could use those four existing ones. And what I'm trying to say is my system uses a mix of traditional well-known systems and incorporates the not so well-known original Maxwell systems. And I came up with the design and I actually started experimenting with it. I've got a few magnets that I wrapped some coils around and I'm experimenting some pretty interesting results which I will share for later videos when I have something a little more concrete but to sum it up I'll show you the process I'm working with here and explain it to you so what happens here is um, using Maxwell's magnetic potentials okay so we have this is the energy I, I basically want to tap into that I was sh showing you that moves the compass without taking any extra work away from the battery so we want to tap into this source of energy because this is the quote unquote, you know, the Dirac C provides it and is the magnetic dipole that keeps furnishing it. So with that said, only certain things and methods can interact with these energy systems. So the compass is one thing, but I understand we can't really do much usable practical work, even though we see it moving with our eyes. This is not going to spin a generator and give us the electricity we want to get, right? So essentially back to the drawing board with that, but it's a good concept to show that this energy indeed does exist and we can manipulate and interact with it. So back to the Maxwell's magnetic potentials here. What we want to do here in my design here is we have two identical, very strong magnets. We put them close together, but not so close. There's a brace, obviously, that would keep them from collapsing. And what you're going to do is you're going to put a piezoelectric material right in the middle, the highest quality you can find, okay? So what you're going to probably think, oh, you're just going to modulate a field and it's going to react. Yes and no, that's just part of it. In a traditional system, yes, that's how that would work. Configured in a traditional way, we would create a feedback loop, the piezo would vibrate to that, but then we'd be subject to dampening because we're not introducing a new energy system and eventually the oscillations would stop. This is a little bit different and I will explain here because we want to take advantage of this, this magnetic dipole and take the energy that comes to us for free. It's not free energy, but it's energy we don't have to pay for out of our wallet. So let's try and use it, right? So with that said, um, let's work with magnetic potentials as we would with electrical currents. So we've got the two magnets which are basically of equal magnetic strength, magnetic potentials. So how do we influence that? Well, that's pretty easy. All we have to do is modulate one of the nearby magnets that will slightly change the field. And all of a sudden we have our, you know, that Garo action. We have the equivalent of a current action, but happening at the magnetic level. So again, you know, great it'll move a compass what can we do with that but that's not the point the piezoelectric material will react to this kind of displacement if you want to call it that as well so even though you will get a little bit back from the traditional magnetic fields the primary source that will actually energize the piezo plate is actually the difference of potentials between the two magnetic fields as per maxwell's theory and when we tap into this kind of a field like you've observed in my previous video with the compass 
that kind of energy that we tap into doesn't cost us any more to use so we could we just need to trigger it obviously in this method using an electrical system but the point is the trigger can be very very small and if we're clever we can work with the trigger in other ways so this is where I'm getting at so basically in the circuit it's a short pulse that would start it that would go into the modulation coil that would give a pulse which would start our, our, our potential our magnetic potential differences and the piezo would react to that that would cause a feedback go into the rectifier diode and back into the modulation trigger coil and on and on it goes but as you see here we're using back EMF like we were doing before we might as well take advantage of that right and then of course we have something similar to a cap dump but this would be a more sophisticated a controlled cap dump so in other words we're pulsing the pulse in the controlled environment and of course this could also be where the extra would go to your dc charging for your traditional positive energy to charge a 12 volt battery on the site perhaps and then run your regular loads off of that later but the point is this is how that would work and of course this would what we call introduce a constructive interference controlled pulse amplifying magnetic interaction again we're using Maxwell's original um, theories in there and it's not just magnetic potentials and magnetic dipoles there's the quantum potential as well that's a lot going on here that me that doesn't necessarily meet the eye right away especially when you start dealing with the spin and the quantum level but this is all included in the Maxwell uh, theories so we may as well use those so um, the feedback of course will enhance the magnetic effect but of course a system like this the, the the timing is crucial because it will either interfere with your system or work forward so that's why the control pulse state is absolutely crucial the whole system needs to be in sync not just in sync but your modulation coil will have to be the closest equivalent to tune to the resonance of the magnets so the system works at maximum efficiency so it's a system of resonance it's a system of amplification it's a system of energy manipulations it's a system of back emf and of course we're also dumping our famous capacitor we're playing the bedini trick we're doing it in reverse because we're dealing with reverse energy this enhances the electret effect so it allows us to get a little bit more of an input energy why not we're doing everything we can here and what happens is this cycle will then continue so again this is not a traditional system to remind you uh, once the initial pulse has been done uh, the extra energy comes from what we're trying to do is the magnetic potential differences that we're tapping into that's what actually allows us to interact with this field and our circuit this way is always open if you want to call it that to the Dirac C which keeps replenishing this magnetic dipole as long as we keep triggering it so I hope you enjoy and understand and I will follow up with this once I get further into it but I'm always looking for your comments and suggestions specifically on the constructive interference section how would we essentially pulse the pulse what's the best way of doing that if you have any ideas let me know and we could all work together on this and i really believe that this one here i could actually probably do it all by myself without major lab equipment i really believe this is doable so it's something worth exploring have a good day all